Have you ever wanted to have ladders in your 2D platformer? Have you wanted it to be as easy as just clicking a tile on the tile map and having your character be able to climb up and down the ladders? Well, this is the video for you. By the end of this video, your character will be climbing up and down, animating, and switching between regular movement and ladder movement states. So without further ado, let's get into the video. All right, so this is our starter scene. I've kind of built out a little map here. I've got some parallax layers and some tile map layers just for us to kind of play around with while we're trying to figure out our climbing physics. So you can see I have the player in the scene as well. So how about we click play and see what we're able to do right now. So if I click my keys, I actually cannot move. So I have not actually done any of the scripting for the player movement yet. So before we start scripting, let's set up our input fields. So let's go to input and then we're just going to type in each direction. So we're going to do left, right, up and down. And once you've typed those in, you can go to the little plus button that's next to it. And you can just literally type the key on your keyboard and it will just fill in for you. So we're going to go through each of those really quickly. And once we're done that, we're actually going to head over to our player scene. So you can see I have a camera set up and I've actually already set the limits on the camera. Uh, we have an animated sprite with all the animation set up and I have a collision shape. So let's go up to our player uh, node, our character body node, and let's make a script. And we're going to give this script a class name and we're going to call it player. And then we're going to add our physics process loop right below that. And we're going to add our movement slide because it's better to set it now than forget it later. And then we're going to make a movement function which will handle all our non-climbing physics and we'll declare it below. And then I'm gonna add a couple of variables at the top for uh, horizontal and vertical speed and our gravity constant. And we're gonna be moving through some stuff a little faster because this is more tutorial on climbing than player movement. Underneath our movement function, we have a variable called direction that uses input dog at axis and checks if we're clicking the left or right key, returning negative one for left, positive one for right, and zero for no keys being clicked. And then we want to check if we're on the floor. If not, we apply gravity. And then if direction, that means if we did click a key, then we want to move in the horizontal plane, else we don't want to move at all. And then we want to check if we are clicking our jump input. And if we are on the floor, then we will jump. So how about let's click play and test if it works. Okay, seems like the sprite's working somewhat. It's not animating or flipping, but uh, it's moving. So let's head back to the code and set up the animation. So we want to make a function called update animation. And when we're done typing that, we also want to pass in our direction variable. So once we declared our update animation function, we want to create some conditional statements that check if we are on the ground or in the air, because that will be super important for switching between our animations, like for jumping and walking. Um, to get easier access to our animation spray, let's create an at on ready variable and we will name it animation sprite. And then we'll come back down to our update animation function and we want to see if we're on the floor and we have a direction that isn't zero, we want our walking animation to play. And if we don't have a direction, then we want our idle animation to play. And if we're not on the floor and we're instead in the air, we want to see if our velocity is negative. If our velocity.y is negative, that means we are moving up because in Godot, up is negative because it's opposite town in Godot. And then we want our jumping animation to play if we're going upward. And then if we are not going upward, we want to fall. We want our falling animation to play when our velocity is positive. So once we're done typing that out, we can click play and see if it works. So looks like it's working, except we're not flipping our sprite when we go in different directions. And that's easy to do. So we can just come back to our update animation and we will make one called animation flip and we will pass over our direction. This is a quick little one-liner here for flipping your sprite around. Uh, and we just wanna throw a little conditional in there with a the direction because we do not wanna check when direction is equal to zero. And once we're done writing that, we can head into our game and we can see that our character is moving around properly, flipping and animating like he should, uh, but we still cannot climb the ladder. So let's go back to our main scene. And I kind of want to discuss how I've seen ladder tutorials done on other people's channels. Um, they definitely work, but there's like some issues that I kind of hold towards them. I don't really like the idea of having to make a collision shape every single time you want to have a ladder on your map. 
uh, it just kind of seems like a lot of extra effort and also kind of dirties up your scene tree a little because you have a million of these collision shapes. Like, this is how they usually do it. So they'll extend the collision shape up and then your character goes to the top, right? But what I want to do is I want you to just be able to click the tile and just draw it on the map and it works right away. Like, there's not a lot of work for you to do when it, you can just click it as if it's a tile. And we have scene collections to do this. So what I think we should do is we should create our own ladder scene. And we can do this by creating an area 2D. And we're going to give it a collision shape and a sprite. And I can do control A, add my sprite 2D. And then I'll go to my assets folder and drag those into the empty slot there. And then I'm going to isolate my ladder sprite. And then I'm going to go ahead and make my collision shape and I'll make it hug the ladder. And I'm going to go ahead and save. I'm going to make a folder for all my ladder stuff because we're going to have a couple files here uh, just to keep things organized. And then I'm going to come back to my main scene. And I'm actually going to go ahead and delete the ladders I have here because we are not going to be using the regular tile atlas for this. Instead, I want to go ahead and make a scene collection. And I'm going to go search up for my ladder here. And I'm just going to drag it right into my scene collection. And then you can just go ahead, click it, and add it into your map. And by the end of this tutorial, it'll be this easy to add your ladders in. There will be no uh, adding collision shapes and resizing them every time you have a new ladder. Uh, obviously, it's not going to work yet, but you can see all of the collision shapes stacking on top of each other. And that's going to be really important for our ladder physics. So before we do anything, I just want to go ahead and name our collision layers just to organize stuff. So layer one will be environment, layer two will be player, and layer three will be ladder. Your game might be different. For this tutorial, that's what it's going to be. So we'll just set our environment to one, and then we're going to go to our player, and we are going to set our player to two. And our player is going to be looking at layer mask one. And our ladder, since it's an area, we actually don't need to look at anything. We just want it to exist on layer three because we want other things to interact with it, aka our player. Um, we're going to go ahead and add a ray cast to our player. So we, we just type that in and you want it to basically encompass your character's sprite. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to resize it so the ray perfectly fits within the confines of my sprite. Uh, this might take a little fiddling, but we'll get there eventually. And once it's set up, um, we can go ahead and set the uh, layer that it's looking for. And we want it to look for the ladder layer, which was layer three, because our ray cast is going to tell us if we're interacting with the ladder or not. So now that we've set that up, let's check it out. So you can see when we walk into the collision shape of the ladder, the ray lights up. And that's exactly what we need for our code when we are trying to figure out the climbing logic. The first thing we need to do is bring in our ray cast. So we'll bring that in as an add on ready variable. And we'll also need a Boolean variable to hold whether we are actually on the ladder or not. And we'll call it on ladder. <laughs> not very creative, but uh, it does the trick. And we'll set it equal to false to start. Uh, once you've typed that, we can come below our physics process and we're going to create a function called is on ladder. And this function is going to return a true or false depending whether our raycast is colliding. And we'll do that by using a conditional statement. If our raycast isn't colliding, we return false. And if it is, we return true. And this is simple, but we need this for our ladder physics. We need it to be able to tell if we are able to climb. Uh, once we finish typing that, we can create another conditional statement within our process loop that checks every frame if we are able to climb. Um, if we are if we're on the ladder, then we have on ladder equal true. Um, when we're in game, I want to add a label that we can visually see which state we're in just for debugging purposes. And we'll call it uh, ladder state. And once you're finished typing that, uh, you can actually just drag it right into your uh, code here and we're going to set the dot text property to basically just give us a little message and say uh, are we in the ladder state and if we are it's going to show true or false uh, you can just do a little plus and then do the str it converts your boolean to a string and then the plus kind of makes them into one thing you can see it here when we're in our game is on ladder is false once we're inside the collision shape it's true but right now, when we leave the collision shape, it doesn't ever reset back to false. So we want it to only trigger when we click the up or down button. So you see we have our is 
on ladder and if we are going up or down that's kind of the logic here if you need to pause and look at that that's fine just go ahead and pause so let's go and turn our game on and see if it works so when i head over to the ladder here when i click the up arrow it should change to true and it did perfect but we're not going back to false when we leave the area so let's set that up so i want to make a new function and we're going to call this function uh ladder movement and basically this is going to control all of our ladder physics and all of our ladder movement <laughs> just like the name says uh once we're done declaring that um I want to go back up to our physics process and actually create another conditional statement. And this is basically going to be the toggle between our ladder movement and our regular movement. So if we're on the ladder, we want our ladder movement to be getting called every frame. And if we are not on the ladder, then I want the regular movement to get called every frame. Um, I also will need our direction vector again, so let's grab that. And we're just going to change left and right to down and up. Um, once we've done that, I'm actually going to need access to another variable and this variable is going to be our ladder speed. So once we've added that in, we can move on to the next step. What we're going to do is we're going to have a conditional statement that says if we're moving in a direction, we want our speed to get triggered with our upward and downward velocity. And then I just want to say if is on ladder is returning false, I also want on ladder to also equal false. So let's see if that's working in our game. So when I walk up to the ladder here and click the up key, it should change to true. It does. And I should be able to climb as well. Uh, the animations aren't working uh, and it's glitchy at the top, but we can fix that. Also, I can't get out of the climbing state by jumping. So we got a couple things to do. Let's get back to the code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an if statement that checks if we are clicking the jump key. And if we are clicking the jump key, I want to apply our jump speed to our velocity.y. And I also want to change on ladder to equal false to break out of that climbing state. And then at the top of our function here, I also want to set velocity.x to equal zero. So there's no moving horizontally on the ladder. Uh, if your game allows that, that's okay. Um, we want to also update our animation. So if we come down to our update animation function, I want to check if we are in the on ladder state. If we are, we can then access our climbing animations. So if our direction does not equal zero, that means we are climbing and we need to start that climbing animation. And we can just do that by playing it. But when we stop climbing, I don't have a don't climb animation. What we can do is we can just pause our animation that keeps it on that last frame. And then we can just return out of the function when we're done choosing which climbing animation we need. And if we walk up to the ladder, it works. Look at that. If we stop climbing, it stops moving. It's awesome. One thing you also might have noticed is when we connect with the ladder, we're not going exactly to the center of the ladder sprite. And to do that, we'll want to make a variable and we're going to store our ladder's x position in this variable. So we're going to call it ladder x position. And how we get access to that is when our array is colliding with the ladder area, we want to access that exact ladder's global position and we can do that by using dot get collider and dot global position dot x once we have that we can come down into our ladder movement and we want to use uh lerp which stands for linear interpolate uh on our player's position and we're also going to need a variable for our uh lerp weight which is basically the increment in which we in interpolate between the positions so we can just add that in we multiply it by delta once we finish typing that in, we can actually go ahead and play our game and see if it's working properly. So when we click up, we go right to the center of the ladder. So let's try it a couple times, see if it's working properly. Yep, it's going right to the center. Perfect, awesome. So one other thing we're still having problems with is when we get to the top of the ladder, we're still doing this glitchy thing. So let's fix that next. So I'm going to make a new scene and we're going to add a node 2D and call it ladder top. This node is going to have two different components. The first component being our area 2D, which is similar to our other ladder scene. And um, we're also going to have a static body 2D, which will act as the surface that our player can stand on once we've reached the top of the ladder. Um, we're going to just go ahead and add in all of our sprites and collision shapes. 
to make sure that it's uh, interactable. Um, for our static body shape, we want to make it a little smaller, and I'm also going to make it red so you can see it better. Uh, and then you also want to give this collision shape a one-way collision so that you can come up through the bottom of the collision shape and stand on top. Um, we also want to make sure our layers are set up properly, so our static body will be on layer 1, which is environment. And then our area will be the same as our other ladder component. Uh, it'll be on layer 3, which is our ladder layer. And once we've done that, we can come to our main scene. And I just want to add it to our scene collection. So I'm going to drag it in. And then I want to replace the top ladder with this new ladder top scene that we just made. And we can go ahead and try it in game. So I'm going to walk over and climb up the ladder. And when I get to the top, I should just stand on top of the ladder. And it works. But we can't go back down yet. So that's what we need to do next. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a new folder. And I'm going to call this folder global. Once we're done creating the folder, we're going to scroll down and we're actually going to create a new script. And this script is going to be called signal bus. And the signal bus will basically be a global hub for all of our scripts to communicate with each other. So we're going to actually create a signal that is called one way disable. And this signal will allow our player script to communicate to the top of our ladder, which we call the ladder surface. And we'll be able to disable that collision shape for a small amount of time so we can slip through the collision shape and go back down the ladder. Because we're able to go up because it's one-way collision, but we want to also be able to go down. So within our ladder surface, we're going to create a ready function. And we're going to go ahead and connect our signal. But first, we have to actually go up to settings and add it to our globals. So if we go to globals and we go to our signal bus, we can add that in. And now that is actually a global singleton and can be accessed anywhere in our game. So you add the signal by using dot connect. And then we want to have a callable, which is this uh, function I've named here on one way disabled. And then you actually have to declare the function below. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a scene tree timer here. So we'll do get tree dot create timer and we'll do some small number like 0 0.3 seconds. And then you have to have, make sure that you call a signal for a wait or else it won't do anything. So we use dot timeout. So when the timer is finished, it will go to the next line of code. So we want to have access to our collision shape here. So we'll drag it in. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy that into our function. And before the timer, we want to disable. So we'll do dot disable equals true. And then when the timer's finished, we want to re-enable that collision shape. So we'll set dot disabled back to false and it'll put the collision shape back to its original state. But we still need to trigger the signal and we're going to do that in our player script. So we're going to come up to our physics process loop and we are going to check if our player is on the floor and we are clicking the down key, we want our signal bus to emit our one way disable signal. Um, and we can do that by accessing our signal bus in our player script and we can actually uh, do dot one way disable and do dot emit and that dot emit sends that signal out to all of our other scripts um, Once we've done that we can actually go ahead and test it out So I'm gonna climb up the ladder and you'll see if I go down the ladder. It doesn't trigger but when we get to the top and I click down it disables you can see the collision shape going white that means it's not Currently active and that works perfectly. So if I build another ladder and try it out Look at that, you can just climb up it. There's no making a million collision shapes, it just works. So there's one last thing I wanna set up before we finish this video, and it's in our player script. So we're gonna to come to our ladder movement. What I wanna do is when our player reaches the bottom of the ladder and touches the floor, I want to put our on ladder back to false. So we go back to our idle state. So we're gonna do that by just putting or is on floor. So if we're on the floor, on ladder, switches back to false, and we go to our idle state, so let's try that. So I come back down, and I switch back to idle. So it's working perfectly now. So this is basically the end of the video. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope this is useful. If you guys have any other ways to do this, let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions as well, leave a comment. Uh, if you learned something, leave a like, and subscribe. Also, if you like the asset pack, I have it linked in the description. And you can go check that out on itch.io. Until the next video, see ya.